Thank you, Martin. So, yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, so, my name is Max, as you already know, and I'm a software engineer at Create.io. And today, today I would like to present to you uh, CreateDB. It's an open source, uh, real-time SQL database, and it's actually built on top of Elasticsearch and Lucene. And um, you might wonder if you know Elasticsearch or Lucene, um, why would you even do that? And does that work? And um, well, I wouldn't be here if it, if it didn't, but um, well, I can give you a hint. Uh, it works like a charm. And let's see and find out um, how it works and, and why this is a good idea. So um, why are we talking about CreateDB? Um, so we have, on, on the one side, we have the traditional databases, which are very well researched. Uh, they have been running in production for centuries. And we have uh, open source candidates like Postgres, MySQL, and also closed ones like Oracle. Um, but um, these are not really meant for, for search. I mean, you can do full text search in, in Postgres, of course. But to do that, this in a scalable way um, can be quite tricky. And um, search engines, on the other hand, are like similar kind of like specialized databases, which are optimized for search. Um, the prominent open source ones are uh, Lucene, which, which is just a, a, well, a search library. And then we have Solar or Elasticsearch, which are like search servers, search databases. And um, these all have like their own query languages. So they don't use SQL. And really, the question is, um, why? Um, why are they not using SQL, and why do we like diverge from from SQL so much just to solve like a more specialized um, database problem? And well, I'm just going to give you a brief history of SQL. So the first SQL draft is actually from 1974, and the latest is from 2016. So that means um, SQL is actually 44 years old. I don't know about uh, so much technology or software, especially, which uh, survived that long. So I think it's fair to say it's a very mature standard. And it is actually a great query specification language. So why, why, why did we drop it? So, and the reason for that is when NoSQL came about, which is um, sort of like, I mean, I would consider Elasticsearch a NoSQL database. Um, so people basically engineers focused on an entirely different problem. And uh, the problem was um, more like, um, yeah, how do we distribute the data? How do we find it again? Make sure it's not lost. Um, the whole CUP theorem with consistency, availability, petition tolerance uh, came into place. And the truth is, implementing SQL, especially distributed SQL, is very complex. It's, it's not an easy task. and, and um, it's way easier to say, um, well, let's focus on, on something, on some distributed technology. And well, we can just build uh, an API that is, well, better because it's much simpler than SQL. And after all, put and get should be enough, right? I mean, everything else you can handle in your application. Um, and we can leave all this old 1974 standard behind, right? Um, well, not quite so easy because um, we actually see SQL returning in a lot of places. We just saw in the Nikos talk about Flink, uh, about the Flink SQL API. So the, the truth is that there are millions of developers and data scientists out there who know SQL very well. And there are just endless tools which, which you can use with SQL. And also, it is just very hard to, to uh, if you have something that um, does, have you have a sophisticated query, it's very hard to, to model it just with uh, some simple key value, NoSQL um, API. And uh, well, it just moves the complexity to the application layer instead of um, giving you like a well thought through query syntax, which you can use to, to retrieve your data. So I think SQL makes sense. I don't know if you if you disagreed at all, but I uh, <laughs> thought I it would be good to give you uh, this short introduction. So with that being said, um, let me um, show you a database um, called CreateDB. 
And uh, I believe it's, uh, it's a very scalable SQL database, which is optimized for search. We will see a little bit later um, what that means. And it doesn't have all the NoSQL bullshit, which makes it really, really easy to use for um, people who just want to write their SQL. And um, yeah, it's a very powerful tool. To tell you a bit more about CreateDB, give you a rough overview, it's been around since 2014. It's open source, Apache licensed in the community edition. Um, and it is built using uh, Elasticsearch, Lucene, Netty, Antler, a bunch of other open source libraries. It's SQL 99 compatible, which sounds like uh, really old, um, but it's probably <laughs> all the SQL you, you ever want to use. And um, it has a bunch of ways to interface. So we have REST endpoint to submit your um, queries. And we also are compatible with the Postgres Wire protocol, which is a really cool feature because it lets you pretty much replace CreateDB with any like uh, Postgres. If you have a Postgres um, uh, adapter and connect with Postgres, you can just pretty much plug in CreateDB there, and it and it works perfectly. Um, because while SQL is a standard, there are certain extensions to it, like for Postgres, but some special tables. Um, and so if, if you replace it with Postgres, it works really easy. And of course, we have JDBC and um, Python and PHP and whatever, a uh, bunch of adapters. So what is great about CreateDB? Because um, I started off a bit, a bit like, uh, like a mar marketing talk now, but I want to be honest with you. So I think it's, it's really easy to set up. It, it is just SQL, and it has great performance, great scale out. Uh, great documentation. You can use it with Docker really easily because actually um, it's, uh, you don't need a dedicated master. Um, it just any node can be a master, so it makes it really use, easy to use with containers. Uh, what is not so great about it? Um, it doesn't support transactions because so if you need a highly uh, highly consistent data store for your bank transactions, don't use CreateDB. So. Maybe it would be interesting to s take a look now at um, how you would use CreateDB. Since CreateDB is a SQL database, it's not surprising that you write SQL. So if you have your table definitions here, create table, where you have uh, the speakers, buzzwords table, and the talks table uh, with um, the speaker name and the talk names, then you can just insert your data. Um, like you would with any other SQL DB, and uh, you can then join, for example, these two tables. So we have full full support for joins. Um, that's that's really nice. Um, a lot of times, what people do though is um, because the join, after all, is uh, comes at some expen expense. Um, they store their um, data uh, denormalized, so they have um, <coughs> the same table here. But um, they, they, well, they basically, this is a combination of the two tables. So you have the, the speaker name there, and you have uh, the, a talk object. So s create supports um, sort of unstructured data. But um, so you have the talk with the title and the abstract. But the really cool thing is once you insert it, um, uh, your data, um, you, you can just select the title uh, from the speaker's table inside this object. and it doesn't, co it doesn't com come at a performance impact. So it's, it's um, CreateDB handles all the in, uh, indexing inside these objects. So um, it really just makes, doesn't make a difference whether you select from this object or you have a dedicated column. So that makes it really flexible in, in use cases where you have uh, unstructured data and you want to quickly um, insert and, and, and query it. Because we are a distributed database, we um, need some way to, to partition our tables uh, in, in a cluster. So if we have like a four node cluster here, um, we can partition um, by name, by the name um, column with this clustered by syntax. And uh, four shards means uh, four partitions. And we can also um, add some replication. Um, for fault tolerance and also to increase our uh, search speed with this number of replicas. Um, of course, then you have the replica stored not on the same node as the, the primary, um, but uh, the CreateDB takes care of handling that. And then also what you can do, which is really useful for time series um, data, you can um, 
basically um, partition your table. Um, so it's a bit confusing. I mean, clustering is like uh, the parts that that uh, you're, you divide your data and you distribute it uh, in the cluster, and then you have additionally partitioning, which is basically creates, um, if we here um, want to create a partition by year of that table, which basically creates a new um, um, entity um, of that uh, table, so all the, so all the uh, data of one year is grouped together, which, again, if you, are, have, if you have time series data, makes it really quick to, to aggregate data from a year or for a day if you have that partition set up. So it's basically a way to co-locate uh, your data. Um, and we have many more features, which I don't have time to go into. I mentioned the Postgres protocol. We have um, uh, analyzers for um, text, for full text search. Um, we have user-defined function, geo search. We, you can back up your data with snapshots. We have a um, bunch of um, authentication, encryption built in, and um, yeah, and a really cool web interface, which I will show you uh, a bit later. So, um, to make this talk a bit more, more interesting, I wanted to give you um, like an overview of how Crazy works and how it's sort of layered. And well, this is the the rough uh, Creative B tech stack. So so we have Lucene at the very bottom, which is our um, document store because that's what it, what Lucina is in the end. And um, it manages all the indexing, the the and which which gives you really fast lookup performance to um, to find find you find data. And the column storage gives you very fast. Um, um, way to aggregate data once you once you found your data and um, yeah basically the scene does does the the raw data handling and then on top of this we have Elasticsearch which is um, we only use a part of Elasticsearch obviously it's it's not the full copy but um, we use it for for tr for networking, for the transport between the nodes, for for figuring out which row, uh, which um, node received which data, for snapshots, and for um, routing through the Lucene requests. And then on top of CreateDB, not on top of CreateDB, on top of Elasticsearch, we have uh, uh, CreateDB itself, which is basically the SQL layer. So it it does the query processing, obviously, um, but it also does uh, compile. Uh, Lucene queries, uh, which which basically create an optimized version for Lucene uh, of your SQL query and sends it through through the Elasticsearch layer um, down to Lucene. And then, of course, we have the distributed query execution, so for joins, for for um, subselects, and all kinds of SQL statements, we have um, optimized um, and this optimized layer, which which creates operations and um, sends them down through from the scene in, in the end. So this is a very big part of, of our work. And um, yeah, I mentioned the Postgres REST protocol already. And we have a very nice um, web interface on top of it, which I will show you in a bit. So. Lucene, if you if you haven't heard about it, just a quick introduction. You probably know what it is, but I mean, Lucene stores documents, and in CreateDB we have rows. So um, a document always corresponds to a row uh, in CreateDB, and um, this document has like fields which you which you define, and um, you can also add more fields, of course. And um, the way um, Lucene is just really fast is that. Um, it has this inverted index, so if you if you want to if you're searching for the document which has the name a Bob, you have you just look in the inverted index and you find your document really quickly. And also, if you then want, for example, aggregate sum up all the prices here of of this um, doc of all the documents like this, then you have this column storage which has um, basically stores your columns uh, in a row, so you can really quickly um, aggregate um, the data. So. Yeah, that makes queries just super fast. And um, the Elasticsearch layer. Um, so in Elasticsearch, we have basically indi indices, shards, and replicas. These are like the main um, 
concepts um, and how you how you structure your data. And again, um, so Elasticsearch basically uses um, um, Lucene and um, creates this this index, which is um, basically um, a Lucene store store um, or more specifically um, n n uh, n times in a, a Lucene store, and it's called shards. And these shards have um, a replicas, and um, yeah, replicas are actually not only useful um, for just replicating data and for fault tolerance, but also um, for increasing uh, the search performance. So um, how do tables then relate to indices and charts? So um, a table in CreateDB in the end is like, a, like an index mapping, which uh, looks a bit like cryptic uh, JSON stuff like, like on the right. Um, the good thing is you don't really need to deal with this with all the JSON um, API in, w when you use CreateDB. And um, so actually, and if you create a petition for, um, for a table, then this actually becomes a separate index. So um, the way this works is basically takes your, your partition value, for example, the, the year or the day that we had pre saw previously, and it encodes that into the uh, index uh, name, and then you, you get just a new index from it. Um, so you can see here on the right, you have, for example, uh, two, three tables, T1, T2, T3, and you see a T1 has like an, an, an index, which is called T1, and four shards. Then on then T2 has um, also has basically separate indexes for every day. For, so you have like T2 day one and and so on. Um, and this is how how it corresponds to to Elasticsearch uh, indexes. So um, what actually happens when when you run a query with CreateDB? So here we we have a select statement where you where we group by the speaker name and um, want to get the the the, the number of uh, talks by by each speaker uh, from this year's buzzwords in the Kessel room, and um, yeah, when 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 you execute a query like this, we basically run through like these four phases, and um, each phase has like different question on a problem to solve. I try to formulate that. So the first one is like the parser. And it first looks at your query and uh, um, divides it into two components, so we, we know what what parts uh, the query is composed of. So here we have a select which has a from and the w and and the where part, a group by and an order by. And then then the analyzer comes into play and asks, you know, what these parts that you give me, what what do they actually mean, and what do they refer to? So you. So you uh, basically uh, annotate um, um, what you have from the parser with, um, so with what you know, um, what you find in, in CreateDB about it. So you know, okay, um, in the from class, the speaker is a table um, that exists in CreateDB. Uh, it has, uh, and you actually try to select a name uh, from f the name from it, the name field, and uh, you're doing a count aggregation. And similarly, also in the group by it, in order by it saw the same field, and the where clause it, it saw that you are actually um, um, you're looking for oh, there's a typo there for the room castle um, and the year 2018. And then what the planner actually does is um, it figures out uh, how do we this is this how do we um, plan how do we get results if we take this uh, logical representation of, of the query and um, put it into, um, uh, prepare it basically for the execution, create a plan how to, to select that data. And here in this case it will, will collect basically the, the name from, from the nodes and then it will run a, a hash aggregate um, to, to, to group um, by the name and then in the end it will sort. So and um, if we have this plan, we need to somehow um, execute it also, and this is what, what the executor is for. So if we look at the bigger picture, 
here we can see that um, each node has these components built in. And um, on top of this uh, create distributed query execution runtime, uh, or actually beneath it, we have the, the transport layer of Elasticsearch and the storage. And so um, if you receive a quest request um, from any client, you will go through, um, and no any node can accept this request, and you will go through these phases and distribute the request, rec the request in the cluster and, and collect the results. So what are the highlights of this architecture? So obviously it's, it's fully distributed, um, and um, you also have uh, this distributed execution, which uh, gives you really fast results. And it's, uh, it's masterless, so you can just connect to any node in your cluster and execute your query. Yeah, it's, um, it's due to the replication, we also have um, the, an the advantage that you don't need um, fixed um, durable storage, so you can use a thermal storage. Um, if, you, um, if a node goes down, then the, the, the data will still be replicated uh, in the cluster. And um, this makes it really good for containers, actually, where you might not always have access to uh, durable storage, but you rather take snapshots from time to time. Yeah, and, and actually all fields in, in this is tunable, but all fields um, in CreateDB are indexed by default. So you don't need to think about um, whether it's fast to query that data because um, it's... it's um, it will be, because it's indexed. Of course, this is, this is tunable. Um, it takes a bit more storage, but uh, it's what most people actually um, want. So I want to show you a bit next what people built with CreateDB. So the main use case for CreateDB is um, uh, what, uh, what we see a lot of people doing it with it is monitoring uh, with real-time analysis, uh, especially um, uh, in, in, in the IT industry, um, industry 4.0, uh, um, surveilling uh, network events, um, um, f having sensors in factories, which, which sends like uh, thousands of um, uh, records a second, and you want to be able to, to have an gain a in real-time insight into what's happening. Obviously, data science, because you can just run SQL, and um, you don't need to know anything about um, databases otherwise. And some people are also doing stream analysis with it. It's, it's uh, well, not maybe not exactly stream analysis like Flink, but you can do a fairly amount of uh, interesting um, cases where you, where, you take part, where you extract data from a table uh, on a regular basis. And um, of course, due to full text search, it's, it's really useful for text analysis. Time series are due to the partition tables, really useful. We have also um, people who um, use it to, for example, track their um, vehicle fleet, um, and they need this geospatial query support there. This comes in really handy. Just to give you an example of, of, of one, one of uh, um, Create.io's customers, uh, it's called um, Alpla, and it ma manufactures uh, bottles for all kinds of purposes, like food, um, cosmetic, or cleaning stuff. And um, they are quite a big company, I would say, um, so 18,000 employees and all around the world. And yeah, so they also use CreateDB for real-time insight into the manuf manufacturing process. So they measure throughput, failure rates. They can see if a machine is um, about, to, um, about to die and needs maintenance. They can just add uh, f really real-time see what is going on in their manufacturing process. And they were pr previously doing that or starting to do that as well, but uh, it came as a much higher operational cost because they, they were basically uh, had like this really uh, big databases and um, uh, to which with expensive software and with CreateDB, it, yeah, they can just run on commodity hardware. And yeah, that's it. Um, or yeah, as actually previously they would would run like nightly um, analysis, which would give them like much later um, insights into their data.
Okay, this is how. Um, I don't know why it's written demo there. Um, I can give a demo as well, but um, this is the CreateDB web interface. So um, this is the overview page where you can give a get a quick overview of what's happening in your cluster, whether all your data is replicated. You can see uh, the load. And um, there's more, of course. We have also a table overview, which gives you uh, the number of records stored and uh, uh, an overview of what partitions exist for a table. And um, also there's an overview page for the nodes where you can see how every node is doing. We even have like a fancy uh, shard overview table where you can see how your data is distributed for every table. And yeah, I, I'm already at the end. I feel like I maybe spoke too fast because it took me like 10 minutes longer when I practiced the talk, but... <laughs> Okay, um, so what, we, what have we learned? Um, obviously, Elasticsearch um, built this search engine on top of Lucene, and CreateDB took it, well, one step further and uh, built a SQL uh, database on top of Elasticsearch and Lucene. And I think uh, CreateDB is perfect for you when you, when you want to use, um, yeah, or have to use SQL, and it just uh, scales out really well, and you can store large amounts of data. And um, now I'm at the end of my talk, so um, I just want you to encourage to try it out. Um, it's really easy, so go to the download page, or if you, if you fancy and bash, just paste this um, and trust us that it uh, runs the right thing. So, uh, or you use Docker, uh, Docker Run Crate. Mm, or built from source, it's also possible. If you are interested in the docs, um, they're really good, check them out. And um, also, contributions, of course, are welcome. It's an open source project. You can look at the developer documentation. There are GitHub issues, Stack Overflow questions, please ask, or join our Slack channel. Thank you very much. So we have time for questions. Hello. Uh, Hi. I actually have two questions. Um, so, first one is about the um, um, JDBC driver that Elastic released. So, they, they have also a way to launch SQL queries on top of Elastic um, recently. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how, how does it compare to that? Uh, <coughs> I. I've only, I actually recently they open sourced their SQL um, layer, so I took a look at it. Um, I have not played around with it much, but as of, as of now, it's very basic. So it lets you run simple um, select queries with, with a where clause. It, it seems to be more difficult or, or impossible to do um, more complex aggregations, subqueries, joins. As far as I know, it's not supported yet. Fair enough. And so, second question about joins. Uh, what are the limitations that you have with joins on top of CreateDB? Because I guess there are some limitations. Of course. Um, so, we recently did a lot of work there to improve join performance. So, if you, um, we have basically the, the um, um, well, we had. In early times, we just had like the nested loop joins, which um, were kind of is really slow way to do joins. Nowadays, we have hash joins. So this is typically if you run like a um, equi join, this is this is very fast. Um, in terms of limitations, you are um, of course limited a bit by by the RAM on your machine. So if you, um, for example, in a hash join, um, you kind of need to need one of the side of your join to fit in memory. So if, you, um, if that is not the case, then um, of course crate will not crash, but um, you, you won't be able to execute the query. Um, so um, this is basically um, the only limitation that I'm aware of. But yeah, otherwise you can really join like uh, huge data sets with like millions of rows. But, yeah, try it out. Okay, um, I just started playing around with the Elk stack, and 
I was wondering, uh, does Kibana, for example, work on top of uh, CreateDB? <laughs> Good question. Um, in theory, I mean, I don't know. Is it, it's, it, it does it just use the Elasticsearch API? I would assume, right? So, it, if that's the only, if that's the case, then. Actually, you, you can enable the Elasticsearch API also with CreateDB. So that might be an option if you really want to use Kibana and you also want the SQL part. So that's theoretical. I mean, I don't know, who, I don't know somebody who does it, but it's possible. <laughs> I, have an ev I have an evil question for you. Um, when you introduced CreateDB uh, in 2014, I was talking to Yodoc at EuroPython uh, four years ago, and it was pretty cool at that time because it was the first database which basically query using SQL. Nowadays, we have we can scale Postgres with clusters. We have uh, stuff like CockroachDB, which provides distributed transactions across data centers. We have stuff like uh, ArangoDB, which provides a multi model database with a document store, graph database, and so on. We have uh, lately Apple released uh, FoundationDB, which provides distributed So, what's the selling point? <laughs> or, 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 how do you compare it uh, with these database? And what would be um, a key feature uh, for making the decision to use CreateDB compared to all others? Okay. Yeah, I think the key feature is probably that we have um, fairly complete SQL support. So a lot of other solutions out there, I think um, they implement only like a, a part of SQL and you run into a lot of limitations. Another advantage is I think that is, it's really easy to set up and to scale. Um, you don't need to uh, do much there. You just add more nodes. And um, this behavior that everything is like indexed and fa searchable really quickly, Thing makes it a very good use for used very good tool for analytics, and um, I think it's generally a bit harder to use it with the others. I haven't, to, honest, to be honest, I haven't used ArangoDB. Um, I've used Cockroach. I know Cockroach is just very, for example, due to the transaction support, much slower than CreateDB. Uh, I've, I've seen that. So, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. CockroachDB is a great product, but if you don't require transactions, I think you're much better off with CreateDB and for the, yeah, for the um, uh, Elastic SQL layer, I mean, I can only say it's it's not as complete yet. So, uh, so I mean, really, what what we've done the past years at CreateDB, uh, CreateIO, is to f to focus on the SQL part, and we could do that really well due to Elastic Certain Machine being kind of provided to us, and um, building distributed SQL layer is not so easy, um, and uh, to get it right. So I think CreateDB does it, does it very well. Hi. Um, I, I have a question uh, regarding, uh, so which um, Elasticsearch version are you using um, today? And um, have you experienced also um, challenges um, across the versions about scalability? So for example, how about scaling um, over 20 nodes? We currently use Elasticsearch version 6.1.2 or something like that. Yeah, so I think is it the latest version? Almost the latest version. We usually we usually track uh, the Elasticsearch version to um, to also get advantage of of the imp performance improvements. Um, so it is true, I think, that scaling Elasticsearch clusters. So and does also create EB clusters uh, to more than uh, or to hundreds of nodes can be a bit challenging because um, uh, it is it's not it's, I think it, the, the the network layer is just not meant to 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 do that because every node stays connected um, with every other node so the number of connections really grow and uh, this can get, sm yeah. But I, I, I've heard actually people using like 100 node cluster. Um, I know that it definitely doesn't stale to thousands of nodes or so. Um, most of our customers use uh, actually rather small clusters, like uh, up to 20 nodes or so, and and they're really happy with it. And but 
yeah, I mean, for huge clusters, uh, it can be challenging, but we might do some, some more work there in the future if more people ask for it. And, and have I understood you correctly? So uh, previously, someone asked about joins. So um, you are, um, if the one of the data sites is, um, um, you need a, a small data site, right? Um, so that you can um, create this join in memory, so to say. And if uh, one um, site is, or if the sites get too big, then you would somehow stop execution and say to your users, no, um, your data set is too big, you are joining. Is this correct? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Okay, thank you. Any other question? In that case, thank you very much. We will continue from 2 p.m. after the break. Thank you.